What's up, Chapal here, Brady at Monkey Edge. Uh, I am somewhere in Southern California with Chemo of Starline Gear fame. We met earlier in the shop, and uh, so we're at his place now, checking out kind of another aspect of behind the scenes of S Gear operations. And also, I wanted to give you guys a look at what maybe a lot of you don't know is some of Chemo's other work, and um, which is photography. He's kind of got his own thing going with uh, photography and layering, layering, and turning it into a whole new. Um, whole new really a, me a media so maybe we can take a look at this piece here and, and Kimo could you kind of like walk us through the, the process of uh yeah uh okay so they're basically uh these are canvases um and they all consist of photos uh it's a giant photo collage so it's this one's probably got 85 to 90 uh different photos that I've taken just out around on the street or wherever. Wow. Uh, and then I start compiling them into a, to a sort of a cohesive piece. All this text is from original vintage magazines that I collect on eBay. Um, you still didn't learn, huh? <laughs> no, amateur <laughs> hour. Jeez. Um, <laughs> so all this text is uh, you know, gathered from those sources. So it takes about six to eight months to do one of these. And then, uh, and then once it gets printed on canvas, I, um, I do some acrylic accenting and then I texture it and then it gets stretched and hopefully sold. And there's some other... Uh, wow, this is really cool. I mean, it's kind of, you don't see a lot of the elements when you first look at it. You know, I mean, obviously that, that car sticks out and it looks like you got a, a, yeah, an older... Yeah, a giant one behind you it. An older, older sedan there. And then what is... What is Oh, is that the tire? Tire, tire tread. Cool. Yeah, so then there's just all kinds of things. There's little butterflies there that all the oh. text is different. You know, just there's um, there's a flower on her eye there. So it's just um, it's just a lot of stuff hidden. Hidden in there. Very cool. It's, yeah, it's almost like every time you look at it, you pick out another piece. Yeah, yeah. that's that's why I try to do them a little bit bigger. Because you, um, you lose smaller, it in you a smaller format. Yeah. Right, right. And this is the same thing. It's just all the same process. This one just has a frame on it, but... You don't really need to frame them, but so what are when are you shooting the images with this in mind, or are you shooting no. the images just by themselves? I mean, anything just that interests you, you're just you're grabbing a shot, exactly. and then so what kind of what brings on the juxtaposition? I mean, you know, like in this piece here, you know, is it you know obviously the focal point is going to be the girl, yeah. right? And then so how do you decide what else? You just are you literally pulling through your catalog exactly. of images? And I, I got thousands of. Images. So I just go through and I just think of something that may work and I throw it in there and sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. Right. So you just kind of keep building on it and um, it eventually reaches a, a place where I think it's done. And so are, are you two-toning this post printing or? Uh, what I'll do is I'll take a, another photo and I'll, I'll go across halfway and then with the blending, a different sort of okay. blending mode, then it'll change like that. But um, mostly all the color comes from, you know, the flowers that are the original piece that's in there already. So, um, you know, like the lips were already red, so I didn't have right, to do right. anything. Um, and then I use a lot of flowers, so that usually does the coloring behind. That's, that's basically it. That's cool. Yeah. And then this, this piece, obviously, me, myself being a, a military dork, uh, uh, yeah, this one's, um, I have two different styles that I do. I do this, that style that you just saw, and then this kind of more propaganda poster, cleaner, graphic style. Um, and I don't know, I just kind of switch between the both of them, you know. Um, I, I collect old vintage magazines, so that's where I get some of the, the planes out of, um, like, the 1930s and 40s magazines. Right, you're and really kind of like that, that makes your, like, almost like kind of like that Art Deco style of... Right, well I like that whole era. Yeah, you know? yeah, yeah, so absolutely. That's, that's really it. Um, I just kind of, some don't work for that, I mean, and some do. So I really don't know until I start, start doing it. Well, so like, so, so you're insane. I mean, you, you, no. you have to be like a little, like, because how do you... How, like when you got that many different things, how do you take? You, you just like, how do you keep, know? How do you know? You know what I mean? Like, it, what, I what, don't what is the image of? What is what starts the process off? Is this like, you hey, know, I want a picture of a girl? And but then, believe me, I wish I could tell you that I had this in my head and I visioned it, but it's just not that. There's just no way. I just I don't know what it's gonna look like. I start with the person first, okay, and I literally just starts throwing shit at it and and, and I see what looks good. I, I have no idea. I don't have any preconceived concept of what a piece is going to be like wow. before I just start doing it. 
And do you have like a mental, do you keep kind of like a mental, are you mentally cataloging your stuff in terms of like, hey, I want to go, you know, um, or do you have literally like uh, tags assigned in software or something like, hey, if I'm feeling the military vibe or, or are you no. kind of mentally like... No, I don't label anything either. So it takes, you know, hours. That's half of it. Half the time is just looking for the images because I have so many folders of shots. Really? And I basically just label the folder of the area of where I shot it, like, you know, West LA, Hollywood. And then I just kind of think so like, oh, I remember I, I shot this cool tree when I was down on sunset so then I'll look at that folder and I'll pull that image and or sometimes when you say I remember shooting a cool X and not remembering where he did it like exactly and, well then yeah it, when I don't remember then it sucks because yeah. then I have to then I have to kind of think like, about go through the, it. the timeline of like how long ago it was and then I can kind of figure it out but wow. that's it I, I really don't know how I just you just throw a bunch of shit and, and then that's basically it you know, how it, how well, you kind of make it sound simple. You throw a bunch of shit, but uh. <laughs> well, no, I mean it takes a long time. Yeah, uh, it's just I, I don't have any idea of what Where? they're gonna look like. I, I I couldn't even begin to like start to imagine an image and do it. Uh, this would be the only one that was remotely maybe that way, but this is the only one I used a real girl in, and I just shot her separate on a rooftop, and then. Um, she was Asian and, and she Edis has a gun in one of them, so I, I wanted to do some kind of World War II vibe with it. So that was literally oh, cool. the, as, as far as I got with, with that. But other than that, I had no idea I was going to put all this now shit. Now when you say real girl, these are all mannequins. Oh. So I, I shoot them all at night through store windows and then, because I don't have to pay them. And they look <laughs> awesome. <laughs> <laughs> but that one was a specific thing that was... And, and they never talk. Exactly. And they shit. <laughs> <laughs> they don't complain. Um, but yeah, so they're all mannequins. Wow. Very cool. Very cool, man. And it's uh, just a cheaper, more economical way of doing it. Oh, well, and they don't talk. Yeah. Hey, uh, why don't you, a lot of you, uh, a lot of maybe some of the U.S. hunters and Eskier fans have obviously seen the, the photo compilation books of you documenting the, 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 the Starlight Gear thing. Well, why don't you tell us about whatever this uh, literally this, is, this just, guy here I don't know some of you guys may know that we went to Japan and did some relief work so this was kind of a, um, a book that I put together of the stuff that basically I saw um, and I'll just flip through it real quick but um, it's just a bunch of devastation <laughs> basically um, so it's just full of black and white images of, of the now let me ask you, uh, without waxing poetic here, because I'm, I'm a caveman, was it uh, was it worse than you anticipate? I mean, when you know, obviously over here we've seen video and, and yeah. heard. Was it? I mean, what was it like being uh, there? I mean, yeah, definitely was, worse because you don't yeah. get the smell on CNN. So right there, you've got the, the the smell, and you can you can see like the flies that are attacking something that's probably somebody dead. or yeah, yeah something. So yeah. you know, you don't get that. Um, and then trudging through it, I mean, this, just the smell was basically like what really kind of made it. What, um, what I've also noticed about your work, particularly in that book, was uh, it really gave you a sense of, of, of the scale of the devastation. You know, I think, again, what, being here and watching the coverage, you saw a lot of the bird's eye stuff shot from. Right. Uh, well, you couldn't get it because there was the roads weren't. There was yeah. no way to see. We were lucky enough to get there when they had just cleaned the roads. Oh, okay. So, so we, could, we could have access. Otherwise, we would have never been able. I mean, these roads were, you know, two miles in, just of six debris. feet deep of crap. And, yeah. and so luckily, we, we, we went when we did, or else we wouldn't have been able to do, do anything. Because you can't, you know. They had probably every backhoe in Japan was, was clearing literally those clearing out. those out. Yeah. So uh, super cool, man. Well, I appreciate um, And Jader, you had a. Was, there, was I missing when, something? When, Tell them about, when you talk about how bad it smelled and, and where you guys had to walk and all that, what did you end up doing with some of your clothes and your... Oh, well, my shoes I had to throw away uh, because there's this, there was some smell. I don't know what it was. There's a combination of, like, sewer and corpse, probably, and grease and just all the stuff, you know, and I, you really? can't get the smell out. Rick got his smell out. I don't know how he did it, but he went, you know, kind of hardcore on his shoes, but I... I cleaned them for a couple of hours uh, twice and, and still smelled it, so we just ended up literally it. Yeah. 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 Um, and uh, my clothes weren't really that bad, though. Um, I didn't really get a bunch of, like, you know, mud or anything, so um, 
you know, I didn't have to do any of that, but the shoes were just, there was just no way to get the smell out. So, so well, I, you know, I hope that gives some of you guys that, uh, you know, obviously the Starling here was really ha had the, uh, the DAV project to get, uh, to get help, like literally from hand to hand there. And, and rather than, you know, writing a check someplace and, and, and into a, a corporation or a charity organization. So I hope that kind of gives you guys, you know, a lot of you guys participated and I know kicked in to buy the beads. Maybe just a little small piece of what was not only done with that money and maybe just a sliver of what it was kind of like to be there because uh, so soon after the aftermath and like we'll talk about later, you know, obviously a huge percentage of Starline Gear's business is in Japan. So there's a lot of friends, um, close friends, close business associates over there that were affected. And so, oh yeah, well they were really appreciative. I mean, I'm, I'm sure they've seen the, the shot of all the people where we, right. you know, they, they, those guys were just stoked beyond belief. Cool. To, to all everywhere we went. So, awesome. Yeah. Well, hey man, I appreciate you letting us uh, invade your pad here and uh, putting no up problem. with uh, our rambling. By the yeah. way, I keep my apartment at a balmy 95 degrees, so that's <laughs> why. Um, <laughs> that's why if this you know is, Brady's yeah. been keeping it cool. This is not an ocean approved right work environment. As soon as we yell <laughs> cut here, I am going to strip down and hose myself oh, off in the courtyard before Burbank PD gets yeah. here. We'll be so boy. We'll do that. For you. <laughs> hey, this is Brady from Monkey Edge with Chemo from Starling Gear. Thanks for tuning in again. See you guys.